Rolling. There was a period in our history where Woodrow Wilson was president of the United States, and he was a proponent of progress, economic progress. And sometimes that meant getting stuff done at all costs, uh, regardless of the safety and quality of life. And that led to the Colorado incident known as the Ludlow Mac. And that led to an incident known as the Ludlow Massacre in Southern Colorado. Which was part of a larger, more prolonged striking effort by the miners known as the Colorado Coalfield War from fall of 1913 to the spring of 1914, climaxing with the aforementioned Ludlow Massacre. What the fuck are we talking about? Thank you for joining us. I am your host, Sweet Tea. With me is Safe. It's Safe. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> and we're talking about workers' rights. We're talking we're about, talk about the Ludlow Massacre, then we might get into a workers' rights conversation. But we're going to focus on the Ludlow yes. Massacre. Yes, <laughs> we're going to focus. Yeah, we're going to focus on the Ludlow Massacre. Ooh, ah, but ah. If you if you care to interact with us, you may do so on Twitter. You can find us at CTS Terry or at CTS Safe, or you can search for us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, or wherever you listen to podcasts by searching for the Catch the Sky podcast. And this week, the Ludlow Massacre. What the hell's that? Well, before we begin that, T, I mean, I think it's it's always a good idea to check in and see how things are going. But more importantly, I want to give a special shout out to the countries of Vietnam and Spain. For being part of the Catch the Sky Nation, we we appreciate your listenership. So we see you, I was Spain. <laughs> Hola, <laughs> ciao, co, co de qua. <laughs> I was traveling through to Denver along Interstate 25, and I had had Ludlow marked for a long time. T a long time. In fact, I think I may have shared last summer that you should have stopped there. I went there. You did, yeah. We paid homage. <laughs> now, hang on. Was before we get too far into this. By chance, was that the exit where you got off and you drove on the opposite side of the road? No, no. Okay, I don't know where the fuck I was, but at some point, I drove on the left side of the road in the United States of America. Oh, you thought you were from England? It and 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 the other lane was on the left side, their left side as well. I don't know why. It was not a construction situation. I will find it and try to share it with our listeners if I can remember. I'm going to start tagging that. Every time I say I'm going to share something, I'm going to say, if I remember. <laughs> so... You stopped at the site of the Ludlow Massacre. So I think we should give the people a little bit of a brief history or synopsis of, of, of what happened here. Please. So basically, like we've been doing for the last century and more, we, we, love, we love coal. And so we're digging it up all over the country. And the Rockies have some pretty accessible coal but it's in some areas that are a little more volatile than other parts of the country. 
So the death rate of miners at this point in time in this area was like double the national average. So, right. yeah. So these guys are, are, are out here busting ass. Not to mention, they're not getting paid for additional work like laying track, fixing roofs, reinforcing these mines and stuff like that, which I said are more volatile than other parts of the country. They're only getting paid per tonnage of coal that they move, which it's more difficult to move because they're in more volatile. So it's a whole big cycle, you see? Right. So they can't move it as fast and they're not getting paid for the extra work that they're doing. So it, it's low pay, very low pay, double-edged sword Dang here, dangerous conditions. And you're being dominated by big business by, by people with power. Yeah. Rockefeller came in and bought the Colorado fuel and iron corporation, or at least you said that like you're on jeopardy <laughs> <laughs> or at least the, 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 the controlling stake of it. I don't know. Did, did he straight up buy the whole thing? That part I'm not unclear of, but he, he For bought those who don't know else. Rockefeller. Yeah. So he was, a he made his money on, on oil, standard oil. And well, he then, wanted to diversify. Now he's getting into coal and he gets into banks as well. Chase Manhattan. I believe and he actually he gave a, control. Jeff Bezos, basically the equivalent of Jeff Bezos, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. The original Bezos. He yeah. gave control of Colorado fuel and iron to his son, though, if I'm not mistaken, Junior Rockefeller Junior. So yeah, what? Regardless, Thanks, Dad. Yeah, regardless, <laughs> these these people are still I'm sure he worked hard over. for it. Oh yeah, and so. It's not just in the Ludlow area, but all over the place. And they decide, fuck it. We're going on strike. And things got pretty violent the end of 1913 mm. going into 1914. And over the course of that time, approximately one to 200 people died. With the climax being Ludlow, where approximately 21 people, including women and children, were killed. So... It, it it was pretty terrible, pretty horrible. They 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 actually burned down a house, and there there was a family, women and kids mm -hmm. down in the basement. And I believe that that is still there and accessible, if I'm not mistaken. What well, was you visited it, this? It correct? was. I wouldn't say it was a home. More so, it was like a. They were digging holes to prevent themselves from being shot at because they were facing the National Guard. They were facing strike busters. They were they were facing people with with Gatling guns, detective agencies, hired guns, you know, hired people, you know, just getting paid to come in and just mercenaries. And yeah, that's... And this this was and at the order of the Colorado governor. The National Guard was called in as well, too. And, and they they used more sophisticated tactics. They brought people in the dark of night, and so people were just really hiding. And then as they burned the tent colony, there were people that had tried to take refuge underneath as a hiding mechanism and then ended up just being charred to death, and that included women and children. Did you go down there? I, well, it was limited, but I read, a, you know, I read that. So you can go to Ludlow, and so our listeners, put Ludlow, Colorado on your list of, you know, pin it. And next time you're traveling through, you're seeing America. There's there's a lot of history. You pull over on the it's side of the yes road. Yes or no? Did you go down the staircase? <laughs> it wasn't open. It wasn't open. It wasn't accessible. Ooh. So, there was nobody around. There was a camper, uh, a motorhome, and and you know occasional. You didn't visitors. just open it up yourself. I I wasn't I wasn't there for that. I was en route to Denver. I I wanted to give my respects. I. Gave some shouts out on social media. I hope I hope everybody's proud and happy. <laughs> That's okay because I did last year. It was open and accessible, so I already did that for us. Yeah. No, you you want to be a goonie, bro? Go right ahead. Okay, you want to fucking get down there and then set some booby traps? Be my guest. Okay, <laughs> that's what I said. <laughs> but I I just I'm not going to fucking dig around and uh, see if I can find buried treasure. <laughs> Yeah, and I believe the entire standoff between the yes strikers. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's an inquisition. 
Where were you in the night of August 5th, 2021? <laughs> For the archives. Right, there it is. <laughs> so the, the, the entire standoff between the strikers and the company, Colorado Fuel and Iron, actually ended when federal soldiers were called in to back up the National Guard. And at that point, they were just like, all right, that's enough. And I guess some good came out of this because it caught such national attention that it was one of the last big labor pushes or pushes for change, I guess, is the phrase I'm looking for. So laws were passed as a result of this that limited child labor, enforced... The New Deal, for those the, of you who were taking notes. Yes, enforced the eight-hour workday. Right. Eight-hour workday? Eight hours, man. Wow. Yeah, that's too much. We need Even that seems one. too much. <laughs> yeah, we need, we need a new New Deal. I only want to work like five or six hours a day. Well, that's what I already work anyway. It's like five or six hours a day. So I'm already seizing control. I've got my own manifest destiny going on here. So you do whatever you want, bro. I'm trying to stick to a desk as long as I can fork it out. But, you know, even that's well, yeah, you know, yeah. sitting is the new ask, smoking. <laughs> ask, yeah, ask your back how that's treating you. <laughs> Epidural lumbar received. I am doing just fine. Still in a bit of pain, but. Moving forward, it's just this and physical therapy, and it's going to be great. Yeah. You're going to be out I back think. chipping one day, and you're just going to be screaming my name, and I'm going to come outside, and you're going to be on the ground paralyzed, and I'm not going to have the <laughs> wheelchair. I'm not going to be prepared. What golf course? Your dog's going to shit all over it. Dibs of the <laughs> Prius. <laughs> I'm going to use it for work. <laughs> Take it out for uh, Uber Uber rides. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm gonna save a fuck ton on gas. You know, I want to give Uber and Lyft a a suggestion, courtesy of Dick Francisco. Require front license plates in all 50 states as a safety as a safety standard, so that people can see either front and back whether they're getting in the right Uber or Lyft. Yeah. Why is that not a thing? Why is that's an episode right there? Well, we'll you gotta, to. yeah, that is an episode. You gotta ask each state. But I like having my ability to run from the law at any point in time. It's the same reason why. <laughs> same reason why. It's, I don't want to get too new of a car because I don't want them to just be able to shut it down from some remote location. I want to be able to run as long as I can. You sound like you should be sleeping in a parking lot in Montana. <laughs> I like my freedom, say. And and that's what this is about, ultimately, is the ideas of individual liberty, private property, and inviolability of contract. And these people are rule breakers. And this is the battle for history and the battle for But the they were living now. in a feudal system. They were living fucking... The, the, the company was their fucking lords and, and kings. And they literally lived in these towns where everything was owned by a fucking company. So fuck the, them. The towns, the towns were Trinidad, Colorado. These towns were owned by the by the company. So yes, they have all the power. Fun fact about Trinidad. In addition <laughs> to that, it is the only city that I visited twice besides Moab. Why Trinidad? And why visit? What's in... Because uh, I, I, Trinidad looked cool. Like I, I like the brick facades and it had a it had a charm to it. But I realized that was from all the labor that... The forced labor that built it. So... Forced is relative. The right? southernmost <laughs> city. It was big enough to have a variety of dispensaries. I see. Yeah, the dispensaries were... We're everywhere. Yeah, I saw quite a quite strong. a few. I didn't need any. I brought my own because it's pretty much legal now through this corridor, except Utah. <laughs> Utah is holding strong. Good for you, Utah. Shout out to Utah. 
<laughs> Shout out to you, Tom. <laughs> 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 Shout out to you, Tom. Oh, I love it. Oh, my God. Now, it should be noted that a lot of the... So, I want... A lot of the labor is foreign-born. I've, I've read reports of Greeks, Italians, Serbians. Yeah, and yeah. These aren't, these aren't just... These aren't Mexicans, but these are no. the new, like we used to hate the Greeks and the Italians and the Serbians with just as much uh, vehemently, just as much passion as they, you know, the hate for Central America and South America as far as labor is concerned. And, and labor, inexpensive labor, and the, it just seems there's a desire by big businesses to mistreat people at the bottom. And I don't know if we've left the feudal system. People will tell you that as an American, you have the right to go out and do whatever you want to do. Pull yourself up by the bootstraps, right? And mm -hmm. I think in a feudal dominated system, an oligarchy, our present day capitalistic system, you can work full time and still not achieve. Oh, and yeah. still be struggling for housing and still be struggling with health care issues and so forth. So, and the whole... Oh, you can take loans out for education. No, that's not that's not good either. That's extortion. And then what is the role of the government and should that be something that they work to provide? And I think we would argue that, yes, I think government is a, an outlet for that. Well, I don't know if I trust the government. I wouldn't trust you and you are government technically. <laughs> I'm so not think government. about that. Yes, you are. Matt Gates is. You government. voted. You voted right now, but you voted not in Florida for Matt Gates. You voted in Erie, Pennsylvania for who's your guy or 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 who's your woman? <laughs> We're we not sexist wreck. on this show. The fucking train wreck up here. Mike Kelly I'm, is the Mike Kelly. is the one guy that insisted that white people are people of color and that he's oh god what did he say well the, the greeks and the italians and the serbians used to be <laughs> they, <laughs> they got they they got in under the white umbrella right and so hell even i'm white technically so arabs are also under that umbrella and racial classification systems are a fun part of history that's an episode where we just get into racial classification and and how these systems came to be and you want to blame sociology, you want to blame critical race theory, but first one to smelt it, dealt it. <laughs> what are these people doing? You know, they invent race and then they get mad at you when you talk about how how racist they are. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Oh, it's a fucking... The whole thing is, and so I just, I, I get that people genuinely believe that if they work hard enough, they can achieve and that they didn't benefit from any privilege and that they've earned everything that they've ever, but they don't, this history is omitted because it's in the buildup right before World War I. So you never hear about this. So this is an unknown piece of history that I think, I'm glad that we're shining some light and hopefully. Yeah, the Titanic happened right before that. Mm, yeah. You, know, you got Titanic and then World War I. It's like, where's Ludlow fit in here? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't learn about Ludlow until Howard Zinn taught me. There it is. And... And then from there, I just, I, but I, I'm almost positive that when I drove there in college, I went for a, a student leadership conference in Denver and I drove and I'm certain I saw the sign and I would have stopped. Of course, I don't, I can't even say definitively if there was a highway sign in 2004, 2005, <laughs> somewhere in that era. But... I'm glad I stopped, and I think moving forward, if if I'm ever in that area, when there's a lot of beauty in there, and so I don't know, there's uh, the Great Sand Dunes is near there. Did you hit that by chance? No. Oh, and there's a volcano, Capulin volcano, and then if, I was very intrigued by my visit to Santa Fe this past weekend, and there's a lot of beauty in this region, and I'm glad nobody has discovered it quite oh, extensively. They're yeah, they they're do. coming. And also nearby is is on the eastern side of Colorado is where the Sand Creek Massacre. So there was a number of 
just killing, <laughs> whether killing Indians or whether we're killing miners and the families of miners, there, there's a consistent use of the National Guard, the military, police forces to quell rebellion and to shut down the middle class and lower classes of society and shut protect the down. rich. Let's go home. Very consistent theme throughout history. And to this day, you know, people get upset when they go loot a Target, not so much a capital gift shop when they <laughs> overtake the capital. Mm -hmm. January 6th, six months has passed. We still don't give a shit. I, I can't believe you guys are rewriting history and trying to just create this false narrative that, that nothing happened and these people were... <laughs> We're as welcomed as the U.S. military in Iraq. <laughs> yeah. Nobody seems to notice. Nobody yeah. seems to care. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Unbelievable. Insurrection is insurrection. So now we get into that is the libertarian side to the conversation and where the role of government is and is it to protect Target and the Colorado Fuel and Iron Corporation? Yep. Or is it or should it have been on the side of the people? Well, it should have been on the side of the people, but the Target and Colorado Fuel and Iron are giving the government more money than the people are. Rockefeller was definitely paying wages for everybody. And he could afford. afford I don't know, what? T. Let me ask you this. If if someone paid you enough, would you go out and club Mother Jones over the head? <laughs> no, probably not. Would you knock a pastor around who was trying to No, no, I wouldn't no. I wouldn't hurt other people for money. But if people wanted to give me enough money to like do some crazy other shit like replace the light bulbs <laughs> at the top of windmills and <laughs> radio antenna, yeah, I'll do that shit. <laughs> Uh -huh, like a circus pony. <laughs> yeah, I'll do that. But I'm not going to go hurt anybody unless they want me to hurt them. You unless... wouldn't knock over a 80 year old man in Buffalo for protesting over Black Lives Matter. <laughs> Just knock the hell out of somebody. No, no. Get pretty fired up about it. No, it's Buffalo. Yeah, fuck. Fuck the who. <laughs> Should be on their way to winning the AFC. Good for them. I hope they. Uh, I hope you no, do it this year, Buffalo. They're gonna have to go through Cleveland. Did the Steelers win the game tonight? <laughs> <laughs> no! I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I don't even know who the hell they were playing. All I know is Alan Fanica is going to be going in this weekend along with Peyton Manning, and that's about the extent of the Hall of Fame news that I have. So. Is there anything else that you wanted to hit on in regard to Ludlow? This was after Ludlow, a call to arms, you know, other mining groups, other workers groups from all over the state of Colorado. They grabbed their guns and they left the job and they went and said, Hey, we mean business. Like this is not okay. Uh, the Denver Cigar Makers Union, they voted to send 500 armed men to Ludlow in Trinidad. Women in the United Garment Workers Union in Denver announced 400 of their members had volunteered as nurses to help the strikers. So all over the country, there were meetings, demonstrations, people picketing in New York at Rockefeller's office. The press was not sympathetic to the side of the workers. They, they bent on the side, the New York times specifically bent in an op-ed carried an editorial and they, they sided with a different handling that, that somebody messed it up, that they shouldn't have killed as many people, but still they needed to do it. So their federal troops, you know, eventually got control, but it's a, this is a monument. This is a memorial to class conflict. And this is something here in the United States that we celebrate is the ability to tell the story and freedom dies when history dies. And I think these stories matter and I'm glad we're telling them. Oh yeah. Because they're so very important. Mm -hmm. And I, I, and no, you know, you can't even say Tiananmen square 
you know, in China. They, they, it doesn't exist, even though that rebellion or that, that moment, while well, it's significant to us because it's propagandized here in this country, but still, you're not allowed to talk about these things. You can't talk about Taiwan. You can't talk about Tiananmen Square. You can't talk about Tibet. And the yeah. oppression right now, Joe Biden is is actually saying residents of Hong Kong don't have to go back because they're they're becoming, they're, you know, they're political prisoners at this juncture. Yeah, and I didn't realize that people from Tibet were basically viewed as threats to national security over there. Political refugees. Yeah, same with Uyghurs. <laughs> yeah, the Uyghur Muslims are being are being retrained and reconditioned mm -hmm. or else or else. And I, I'm going to go on record here T. I, I've met Uyghur Muslims and they are, if you just Google their name and, and NPR cause national public radio is where I get most of my information. Shout out to NPR. They will tell you that a lot of the models in China come from that region and they're actually Uyghurs. And the reason why is they, they have a, a hue that is lighter in their skin. So they look a little, they're a little mixed with the Russians up there. So kind of like Chinese Russian mix. And a lot of those are Uyghur Muslims. And so they're the models and God knows what's happening to those poor models. I, I bet as part of the reconditioning and retraining, there's assault and rape and sexual violence is occurring. And, there are American businesses are the United, you know, I will shout out to Joe Biden and Donald Trump for standing up for this. You know, Mike Pompeo will we'll give it to the Trump administration. I'm not, I don't think anybody complained about that. And the Biden administration has not reversed anything regard, with regards to China. And actually people are calling on him right now to take away some of the trade tariffs. So we'll see what happens there again, future episodes, but obviously stuff that we're paying attention to because it relates to freedom. And we're on kind of two paths at this juncture in history. And you look at the economic progress China has created and the economic progress the America has created, but they did it differently. Mm -hmm. And with American systems, it's more open. And so we're allowed to tell the stories. We're allowed to share the narratives. Well, that's... And that's important. Well, that's... Yeah, I was just going to hop in and say that, you, you know, we're currently in a... Not a labor dispute, but there's a lot of, a lot of flux in labor and that market and that realm right now presently right people can't get people to work there's there's not enough money to go around some places are dishing it out other places are trying to be more tight around the waist but i think they're gonna find out that people are just gonna go where the money's at mm -hmm. time to pay the fucking piper <laughs> <laughs> but like you said you can't even have that conversation in in other parts of the world not allowed. Not allowed. So I think for future purposes, as foreshadowing goes, those are those are going to be some topics we want to maybe get more into. A robust conversation. <laughs> Very robust. Yeah. Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I, I got nothing else to say other than, you know, you can go back, look at the history books and find some information from various, inf you know, find reliable, credible information and learn about our history of labor mm -hmm. and the fight for labor. Yeah. It's important. Yeah. And I think it's, uh, it's about time we have another, a new, new deal. We need another upheaval here. I want a 30 hour work week. <laughs> Workers of the world unite. <laughs> So if you care to interact with us more uh, about this topic or any future topics, if you have any suggestions or questions for us, you may hit us up on Twitter at CTS Terry or at CTS Safe or on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, or wherever you listen to podcasts by searching for the Catch the Sky podcast. And until next week, thank you for listening and keep trying to catch the sky.